Hey and welcome to part 3 of uh, Cure Your Mind online course. Today we're going to talk about the liver and how the liver affects your digestion and your mental health. So first of all, let's find out where the liver is. It's on your right side, underneath your right rib cage, um, kind of opposite your stomach. And you'll see right here, here's your stomach, here's your liver. And the liver now has um, something attached to it called the gallbladder, where it's and the gallbladder stores bile, which is a juice that the liver makes. And this uh, juice, the bile, goes into your small intestine through a duct called the bile duct. And the bile helps uh, digest a lot of food in your intestines. In your intestines, there's a lot of digestion that happens here. And bile also detoxifies uh, toxins from your blood. Uh, so the liver basically absorbs the toxins in your blood, puts it into bile, and squishes it out, squeezes it out into your intestines. And basically, the toxins then go through your intestines, through your large intestine, around, and out through your body as poop. Now, the bile acts as lubrification, yeah, and uh, makes your stool soft and smooth. So if you don't have enough bile because your liver is not working properly, um, you'll end up with constipation. So you can see how your feces get stuck to the walls here. And when that happens, when there's too much poo stuck in your intestines, there's a lot of toxic buildup. And when there's a lot of toxic buildup, of course, there's more damage to your intestines and more leaky gut syndrome, imbalance of good bacteria and bad bacteria. And of course, more toxins in your blood. And when you have more toxins in your blood, you'll have more inflammation throughout your body, which will affect your brain chemicals. So let's go through this step by step, all right? We'll move on to the liver. Just make sure you don't lose my face here. Awesome. So what does the liver do? Liver is like your master organ in your body. It controls almost everything uh, from blood purification, detoxification of drugs um, and toxins and also the toxins that your body produces on its own through all the enzyme processes that it deals with. Your liver helps you make enzymes, bile that we talked about. It metabolizes and produces hormones and also makes proteins and proteins are important because they are the building blocks for neurotransmitters and brain chemicals which affect your mood. As we spoke, bile is needed for digestion because um, it makes the, the juices in bile help break down fats and your vitamins such as vitamin D and E are, they need fats to be absorbed into the body and vitamin D is very important for anxiety and depression and mental health. Your liver is also important for blood sugar storage and regulating your blood sugars, immune cell activation and even storage of vitamins and iron as well. So you can see that if your liver is not working well, either because of poor diet, too much stress, too much alcohol, too many toxins, then a lot of functions in your body will go wrong and your detoxification will not happen properly and you get other diseases such as cancers and ovarian cysts and tumors and just a, a whole breakdown of your entire system. So like we talked about um, when there's reduced bile being produced because so a lot of toxins in your body and a lot of stress and a lot of um, inflammation and, all, and fevers and inflammatory foods will affect the function of your liver and if your liver is not functioning well it'll produce less bile and with less bile produced of course there's less lubrication which means more, less lubrication in your intestines which means your stool or your feces does not come out of your body easily that's called constipation when you have too much constipation you get damage in your lining in your intestines and that damage will cause more inflammation in your body. And like we talked about in the digestive health chapter, when you have more inflammation in your body, your body has to produce more cortisol, uh, which is made by your adrenal glands. 
your adrenal glands are already tired from chronic stress, right? They're always producing adrenaline and dealing with a lot of life issues. Now you're asking them to produce more cortisol, excessive amounts, because your body's inflamed, right? Um, so you will make your adrenal glands even more tired. And as we saw in the previous chapter, adrenal fatigue is a leading cause for emotional issues such as anxiety and depression. Now, with poor liver function, there's poor digestion, right? Because there's less bile, which means if you're digesting your food less, you will have less food to absorb. And that means less nutrients to make your brain chemicals such as serotonin, GABA, dopamine, and melatonin, all important for uh, brain function. And in fact, important for the functioning of all your organs, right? So with poor liver function, you're going to feel low energy, tired, sluggish, just because you're not assimilating nutrients well. And also your body's super toxic, right? It's not releasing all the toxins. In Chinese medicine, actually, um, we have a certain picture, we a diagnosis, we call liver energy stagnation or liver qi. Qi means energy, liver qi stagnation. And the picture for that is depression, insomnia, anxiety, gas bloating, constipation, PMS symptoms, that's premenstrual symptoms, and hormonal imbalances. And you can see how all these are connected now, right? So with poor liver function, less bile means more gas and bloating because of the poor digestion. And because of the inflammation going on and the hormonal imbalance, you will have insomnia, anxiety, and depression because the brain chemicals are affected. And because your liver is the master controller of hormones, you'll also get PMS issues and hormonal imbalance. So you can see that everything in your body is interconnected, right? Um, so instead of taking one medication for depression and then an antacid for gas and bloating and then a laxative for constipation and then the birth control for PMS and hormonal imbalance, these are too many medications in your system that are being used to create, uh, to treat the root cause. Uh, I mean, well, they're not treating the root cause. They're basically treating symptoms that are a result of poor liver function. With naturopathic medicine, we can treat the liver, and I'll show you how, so that we're treating the root cause, and you don't need extra medications to treat all these symptoms of the underlying cause. Hope that makes sense. So um, before we go into the treatment of the liver, let's talk about lactate. Um, lactate is a chemical in your body that's produced um, when you use up a lot of glucose. And high levels of lactate actually contribute towards anxiety. And when you have a lot of inflammatory foods and a lot of sugar, lactate levels increase. Now, lactate is converted back to glucose, a safe sugar, by your liver. If your liver is not working too well because of the reasons we discussed before, then lactate levels will remain high, which means that you will be more prone to anxiety no matter what you do. Uh, the other things that affect lactate levels, of course, is caffeine because caffeine, number one, interferes with liver function. Caffeine stimulates your adrenal system and to make adrenaline, right? And that also causes a higher amount of sugar to be released in your blood, which then means more lactate levels in your blood, right? Um, so caffeine, sugar, and lots of alcohol... Um, will increase your lactate levels and therefore contribute to anxiety. So, in addition to caffeine and alcohol, what other things affect your liver health? Of course, there's lots of drugs and um, infections. If you have chronic infections, they, will, they can damage your liver. Of course, things like hepatitis virus will cause significant damage. But even low-grain infections uh, take an effect, take a toll on your liver. Food allergies. When you have inflammation in your gut, inflammation also occurs in your liver, right? It's not only in your gut. And inflammation in your liver will damage your liver cells and therefore make them produce less bile and fun and detoxify your body less. Yeah? So these are you have to understand that it's important to remove inflammatory foods because they also affect your liver and other organs in your body. Low thyroid function uh, significantly affects your liver. So Basically, your thyroid hormones, thyroid hormones stimulate your liver cells to work better. 
Yeah, all your cells need thyroid hormone to function. So if your thyroid hormones are low, your liver cells are not working too well. So they're detoxifying less and they're producing less bile. And what that means is that less bile means less lubrication and more constipation. So that's why you'll see people who have low thyroid function will also have yeah, constipation or gas bloating and just sluggish, sluggish metabolism. Now, very interesting that, I, that I've been taught is that your diaphragm, deep breathing, actually massages your liver. And so, let's say, when you're stressed, you get tight shoulders, right? And that's because when you're stressed, you're doing shallow breathing. So you're only using the upper, upper muscles to um, inflate your lungs. And if you're relaxed, you'll breathe more fully. You'll use your diaphragm, yeah? And your diaphragm then will press over your liver during a full breath which helps with a detoxifying effect. So that's why we see stressed people have poor liver function. And that's actually recorded in Chinese medicine that stress is a contributor to liver energy stagnation. And the diaphragm, the, the involvement of the diaphragm is the scientific explanation of why stress and therefore shallow breathing causes poor liver function. So let's go and heal the liver now. This is the most exciting part. Um, I find that the liver is really the fundamental organ to health, and it's the core. It's a core part of my treatment protocol. So let's go step by step. One is herbs. We can use certain herbs that will detoxify your liver, and also heal the cells. Milk thistle is one of the most commonly used herbs to help liver function. Then we have dandelion as well as artichoke leaf, and you'll have combination su like, uh, supplements that have a combination of different herbs in them. And so look for these combinations because they have a nice cleansing effect on the liver cells as well as a rejuvenating effect on the liver cells. Um, there's certain foods as well that will stimulate bile flow and also repair the liver cells. Beetroot has high in glutathione, which is an antioxidant which helps gut repair. And then you have your cruciferous vegetables, such as broccoli and um, cabbage. These will stimulate liver detoxification. And then bitter foods, bitter foods like um, dandelion, arugula, rocket. These bitter foods, uh, the taste of bitterness stimulates bile flow as well. So which means it helps your liver detoxify. And turmeric, like we talked about in the digestive health video. Turmeric helps with liver function, liver detoxification. It's an antioxidant as well. So it, you see your liver goes through a lot of oxidative damage um, because it's dealing with toxins a lot. And so turmeric helps repair your liver as well because it's anti-inflammatory. Now that's directly acting on the liver. What about in your intestines? You have a lot of toxins going in there, so we need something to bind to these toxins so that it comes out in your stool, in your feces, rather than being reabsorbed into your body. So that's why you got to have a lot of leafy vegetables, a lot of high-fiber diet, because it binds to these toxins, right? And it binds to excessive estrogens as well. And anything that you don't want to remain in your body, it pulls it out into the feces. I use homeopathy a lot to treat the liver. Um, in homeopathy, you have to be careful. Find a homeopath who can give you a remedy specific to your unique sim set of symptoms. Um, however, there are nice homeopathic combinations that are specific for liver function. And the remedies that I look for to help with the liver are Nux vomica, Phosphorus, Lycopodium, Chalidonium, and China. Um, Nux vomica is fantastic for hangovers and also for constipation, yeah, especially when the stool is like little balls. Nux vomica is fantastic for that. And Nux vomica is also great to release the effects of stress. We'll be talking more about homeopathic remedies in another video. And we talked about the antioxidants, uh, the, the need for antioxidants in liver repair because your liver is dealing with so many toxins, it goes through free radical damage, right? These toxins cause oxidative damage to your liver cells. 
So we need antioxidants such as glutathione, selenium, vitamin A, C, E, alpha lipoic acid, coenzyme Q10, yeah, and colorful berries. And these are all great things to add to your diet. If you're feeling overwhelmed with all this information, generally what I do is use a homeopathic remedy, one of the homeopathic remedies or the homeopathic combinations. And I also get a, a complex with milk thistle, dandelion in it. And that's simple enough and you'll get things working. Another method that I use to detoxify your liver, you have to be careful with this though, is castor oil packs. And what you do here is, I'll just show you, on your right side, um, underneath your right breast, you rub castor oil over your right rib cage, all over your right rib cage, even up to your belly button if you want. And then you can put a thin white cloth on top, very thin, and a plastic bag to keep the oil against your skin. And then put on a hot water bottle. And never do this during your menses or if you're pregnant, okay, or over broken skin. It's, um, it can stimulate an abortion and in menses you lose too much blood. So what you do, you, you lie down with this castor oil pack and the hot water bottle on top. The heat drives the castor oil into the lymphatics around the liver and that helps flush your liver as well. So you'll notice you'll have a lot of softer stool and this is great if you're constipated. Of course, don't do this if you have diarrhea because you lose too many fluids as well. You can leave the castor oil pack on for about an hour. I generally recommend going to bed with it and then after an hour, just let it fall off. And the next day repeat the same thing if uh, you do have signs of liver stagnation which is like pms symptoms and you feel you gas and bloating and constipation then do the castor oil pack for about three weeks on one week off that one week off is for women it's during menses yeah don't do it during menses and if you're breastfeeding as well i don't recommend castor oil packs because when you're breastfeeding and you're detoxifying your liver, there's a, a huge release of toxins in the blood, in the blood, and that goes into the breast milk as well. So use caution around that. Check with your naturopath um, specific to your your symptoms and your condition. So let's look at a case study. Um, patient, call me, we'll call her Mary for now, 33 years old. She had insomnia, migraines, depression, and PMS symptoms. Okay. And as a child, um, she, she just felt that her mother abandoned her. The other symptom she has is constipation. So you can see, instead of giving a sleeping pill here and a painkiller here for the migraines, a sleeping pill for the insomnia, and then an antidepressant for the depression and birth control pill or something else for the PMS symptoms, we decided to treat the liver. So that we used the milk vessel dandelion complex. And already half her symptoms start disappearing. Then of course we repaired the gut like I talked about in the digestive health video using glutamine to repair the gut lining, probiotics to put back the good bacteria, fish oils to reduce inflammation and diet changes removing inflammatory foods. Okay. Then with this the basic protocol um, I would say she had about 80 to 90 percent improvement already and then we chose a homeopathic called Natrium Muriaticum. Um, and I'll talk about homeopathy in a later video. Natrium Muriaticum is a great remedy for emotional issues, crying a lot, feeling sad, and even feeling where there's a abandonment issues with a mother figure or attachment issues. So we gave her Nat Natrium Muriaticum as a homeopathic remedy to help her mood further. So this whole protocol using the supplements and ho homeopathy I would say created about 90 to 95% release. And I added a body therapy with her. I personally practice Bowen therapy, which I find fantastic to rebalance the hormones and detoxify the body. But if you don't have a Bowen therapist around, you can use an acupuncturist or reflexologist just to enhance the, the body's response to the supplements that you're using. Great. And so that's uh, the end of the, the liver chapter. Up next, we'll be talking about the effects of stress and the adrenal system and how that affects your brain chemicals. So stay tuned and we'll see you soon. Thanks.